Howdy folks, welcome back to the workshop. So today we're going to be working on a Southwestern inspired Bowie knife. It's going to have a stone washed blade and a nice antler handle. So it should be a pretty fun project. Let's get right into it.
Okay, so we got the guard mostly fit on. Uh, it's pretty close. So I think this is as close we're going to get it before we actually do the heat treat. Um, so right now I'm going to fit up the spacers. So we're going to go with the guard, then leather, then thin piece of brass, then the, uh, part of this turquoise material, and then another piece of brass, then another piece of leather, and then another piece of brass. Um, and then all that will culminate nicely with this piece of antler that I got. So uh, I just I'm going to do a test uh, thing for the distance so I can see how long a piece of antler we're going to need, and then after that's done, we're going to uh, probably probably going to need to curve the tain a little bit. Uh, but I guess we'll see after we get all this fitted up. Alrighty, so this is more or less what I want it to look like. So we got, like I said, the uh, three little brass pieces, the leather, and then the turquoise piece. Um, so we're going to cut this a little generously that we have a little more to work with. But I think what we're going to end up doing, cutting the antler to about there. I'll measure it up first. And then probably curving the tain starting about here. That way when it comes down, uh, we can actually make the, uh, the screw cap pommel uh, there and have plenty of material to work with there because... This is half inch brass stock, and this will actually thread onto the back. So I think this should all go pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece, and then we'll continue to measure to see how far in we're gonna have to uh, curve the tang here. Okay, so while we're waiting for the tain to cool down from bending it back over, I already scribed the lines on the piece of antler uh, for drilling the hole, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm probably going to go with a straight hole um, and then kind of like go halfway through to where they'll connect in the middle to where it'll kind of gradually curve, um, and then I'll probably just file out the rest. Okie dokie, so the spacer thing worked pretty well. Uh, the little shim that I put in there did uh, maintain a little hole, so I'll be able to fit a file in there and clean out the remaining epoxy, and then I'll get it fit back up to the tang of the knife, and then i uh, got to start hand sanding on the blade, and I'm probably gonna get it up closer to 400, and then we'll throw it in the edge, because it's gonna be a stone wash blade, so.
Okay, so we got the blade fully hand sanded and I got the false edge on the top finished. So we're gonna go ahead and throw in the etch and then we're gonna do the stone washing process. Alrighty, so just got it out of the tumble box thingy that I got. Uh, I really like the way it turned out. It's got nice even coverage. Got uh, like a small fine pattern and then larger scratches along the rest of it as well. Uh, that way it kind of has a little bit of variety. The way I achieved that was I had the box uh, with all the tumbling media that I had and then shook it up to where there's a lot less room for it to kind of move around. So it kind of stick, kind of stick around the location of the blade. And then when I was done with that pass, I covered it back in oil again. I uh, took out about half of the uh, tumbling media. That way they had more room to bounce around and make larger impressions on the blade. But all in all, I think it turned out really nice. It's kind of rugged and clean all at the same time. So it should look really nice up against that brass guard. So yeah. Okay, so we got the pommel all mounted up. Uh, like I said, I put two eighth inch steel pins into the, uh, the actual brass part and then hammered it onto the antler and then it's all epoxied up and dried. I did that last night. So now, since it's all nice and square, we have it attached to the drill press. I have the aforementioned bottle jack under here to keep everything nice and square. So we're going to actually pile it a uh, an eighth inch hole and then we'll use eighth inch pin because I thought 316 pin stock might have been a little too large uh, since it's only half inch. I'm sure I probably could but I just feel more comfortable using eighth inch and this should be more than enough. So uh, let's get our safety glasses on here in protection and uh, let's get after it. help 
if the uh, go press it actually. Okay, so it looks like we've got a pretty square hole. Uh, it looks even on both sides. Gonna go ahead and slide some pin stock in there to see what it looks like. Okay. Oh yeah, that's gonna be perfect. Oh yeah, and that should work out just fine. So that way, the butt cap will be attached to the actual tain itself, so it won't be able to push out. And those uh, extra pins in there, and the way the hole is oblong, will prevent it from ever rotating. Uh, I actually did this when I uh, I made like a Randall kind of a style of a knife. But yeah, I did the through tang with the little pin at the end. Uh, and actually looked pretty good. The deuces I thought that was about mm, four years ago, something like that. So yeah, should, should work out pretty well. I'm going to use a sacrificial pin. In the meantime, just in case anything goes awry while I'm grinding, because usually when I'm grinding away a pommel like this, I'll take away most of the material beforehand. But like I said, this antler is uh, kind of a strange shape compared to what I'm used to working with. So I didn't want to mess it up or it shift at all while we were drilling or using epoxy or setting pins or whatever. Because uh, brass and copper, are two of my favorite materials to work with, have the tendency they have a tendency to heat up a lot during the grinding process, so it can actually reactivate epoxy and burn handle material, especially when you're working with uh, stacked leather, and I, I think there's some kind of an acrylic uh, composite. Uh, it's called True Stone. I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but it's the closest I can find to turquoise without it actually being turquoise, because I imagine uh, the real stone would be kind of brittle, and I don't think that would be uh, suitable for a knife handle. Could be wrong, but... Uh, looking pretty sharp. This is all just a bunch of gunk from the duct tape uh, from when I was actually hammering on the pommel. Uh, it's gonna have a pretty nice long long handle. Uh, nothing wrong with that though, so yeah.
Alrighty, so here's the knife all finished up. As you can see, it's got a pretty nice tight fit up on the guard. Probably one of my best. Uh, the one thing I like about working with antlers is that it doesn't have to be like mathematically perfect and symmetrical. Because obviously this antler is not, I did not straighten it out, it left it natural. Um, so I think it really complements the knife how everything's kind of just flowy into the knife itself. Uh, I think the customer is going to like it a lot. Uh, and as you, can, as you can see, you saw earlier, that true stone, if it'll focus. Focus. Okay, as you guys can see, the true stone polished up really nice. Uh, I think it's like an acrylic with uh, natural minerals, something sprinkled in there and turned into a little brick. And everything just kind of blended nicely together. The stone wash turned out really nice. Uh, it kind of has a nice satin finish to it versus normally when I do them, they're more like a matte. So I kind of like the way it complements the rest of the knife with the, the brilliant shiny brass and everything. And also the pommel turned out really nice. You can't even see that pin in there. Again, good focus. There we go. You can't even hardly see that pin in there. There's one little flaw on this side, I think. Again, it's kind of hard to see on camera. Might catch it with the light. I think you can kind of see it right about, right about there. It's pretty hard to pick up on camera, but it's, it's there, so. Uh, just a good lesson learned. Uh, if you folks like this video, it'd be really cool if you guys could go ahead and subscribe and give this video a like and possibly even a comment. Uh, it really helps out a bunch. If you folks are interested in purchasing other knives and products of mine, uh, I will have a link to my shop in the description. And again, if you're interested in more behind the scenes project stuff and more business updates, I will also put a link to the Instagram in the description. But that's all for this video. So until next time, be strong, work diligently, and glory to God in the highest.